Okay, so we're continuing from before. Um, we have mentioned how we can make different kinds of stocks. Now, from those stocks, um, we can create also different kinds of soups and sauces. So, as mentioned on the previous clips, from the base soups and sauces, we also have um, derivatives of them also. So, let's talk about the soups first. First, we have our clear soups, as mentioned um, in the previous uh, video. We have our bouillons. These are slightly more um, a rougher version, less less clean version of the soup. This usually comes straight from the stock, and then you might add more ingredients, um, such as vegetables, to create minestrone. And then you would have um, something that's been clarified, such as a consomme from possibly a chicken stock. Um, if you want to make a consomme, you would have your stock, which you have looked after properly by uh, making sure that your bones are clean, making sure that you have skimmed your stock whilst you're preparing it, bringing it to the boil from cold water, and then uh, gently simmering it. So all the scum comes to the top. You skim it, you skim it, and you look after it. You have a good quality stock, but then you want to clarify it even further to create the consomme. So then you need to create um, what is called a raft. So a raft contains egg whites, to bind everything together, and egg whites also have a cleaning property. Um, you also use uh, a mince, which is a protein, to add more flavor to your stock. So for example, if you're using uh, chicken stock, you will use chicken mince. If you were making, for example, beef consomme, then you would use beef mince, because the flavors match. Um, then you would create a, a slightly more um, rougher version of a mirepoix, again using the same ingredients, your celery, your carrots and your onions to boost further that flavor. You chop it up, you mix it all together and then you add it to your um, stock, starting from a gentle cold temperature and then you gently bring it to the boil and you keep watching it. Um, just as it comes to the boil, you bring it to the very lowest simmer that you can. You then let it clean itself, so the rough it's called a wrap because it looks like a boat and all this come, comes to the middle. This uh, cleans the consomme, uh, stock, sorry, the, cleans the stock to create the consomme. So the consomme becomes more rich in flavor, it becomes more, uh, has more depth in flavor and it becomes really, really crystal, crystal clear that you can see this spoon that's in the soup and you can see the garnish that's more delicate floating on top. So. To create this, first you have to create your good stock, and then you um, pass it through your strainers, or using your oil filter paper to make it even more clean, and then you create the rough, and then you create your consomme. Um, other types of soup is thick soup such as um, broth, um, thick broth that you can add pasta to it, or you can add um, beans and legumes to it to make it thicker and more um, rich. You can also have pureed soup, such as if you were to make uh, potato and leek soup, for example, that we would do in one of our recipes. You would cook your leek, you would cook your potatoes, um, you would add your other ingredients and your stock. And at the end of it, after everything is cooked, you're going to pass it through a blender, um, blend the whole thing, and this creates a smooth, silky um, result, which you might be finishing off with maybe some sour cream or some cream or in some thick soups you might finish this with a, a liaison. So a liaison is basically a mixture of creams and eggs. This creates a sort of velvety finish to it which makes your taste on the palate better. Um, then we have other soups such as uh, more specialized soup like as bis for example. It's made from um, roasting lobster bones and crab bones and possibly some prawn um, shells. All this gets cooked off until you get that nice um, seafood aroma. Cook it off for a long time, you get that deep red color. Um, and then you blend it all together with a food processor, thicken it with some rice, um, add some tomato paste, and sometimes you add um, alcohol such as Perno to create the um, background aniseed flavor. This then again goes through a lot of passing uh, through the old chinois to make sure that all that uh, scum and all that bones are removed from your end result 
and then finished off with again other things such as uh, creams and different kinds of flavors. So very rich, very decadent, very um, quite expensive soup. Um, other soups such as cream soups um, using uh, velouté type base. Uh, a velouté is something that's created using a roux and a chicken stock, and then also bechamel based soups such as um, possibly potato and bechamel soup or you can make a velouté of mushroom for example that they both use a thickening agent this is called a roux so a roux is basically made from two things you have your butter and then you have your flour almost every single recipe of roux is the, the base ratio is one to one so we don't really need to weigh how much butter how much flour you just need to know how much roux you need to make so if the chef goes to you, can you make me uh, one kilo of roux, for example, then you'll be making with 500 grams of butter and 100 grams of flour. So it's always a one-to-one -one ratio. So it's a very easy formula to remember. The butter um, gives you the nice um, flavors and the flour thickens it. The other part of making a roux is you have something else called a bourbonier. Bourbonier is actually two parts, butter and one part of um, the flour. You mix them together to create sort of like a paste. This then you use to thicken um, your sauces at the end, for example. Um, if you think it's not quite thick enough, the butter being fat, it melts gently into the sauce, dispersing the um, starch evenly so you don't get lumps. Um, in the case of if you work in an Asian restaurant, for example, then you will be using corn flour and you mix this with some water again to make sure it dispersed in a hot liquid um, gently and doesn't create lumps. Um, on the other hand, if you want to thicken something and you don't want the color to change, you might be required to use something like a arrowroot. So it will still have the same thickening properties as corn flour, for example, but the actual color of the product source doesn't change. So you have to figure out um, what kind of end result you want from using different kinds of starches. Um, the roux comes also in different kinds of stages. You have your white roux, which is partially cooked, not too much. Um, you can still see the whiteness of the flour. Um, when you cook the next stage, this is called the blonde roux. Um, what we do is we cook and cook and continuously until some of the fat within the butter turns slightly into a ghee color. So it turns blonde. The color becomes quite yellow. Um, if you continue cooking this, you get what you call the brown roux. Um, you can see it from the nice brown color. Um, just before it turns to burn, um, the, the smell starts to go a little bit nutty. Um, basically, what happens is the sugars within the um, milk in the butter and the sugars in the flour starts to um, create a reaction called Maillard reaction and all the sh natural sugars turn into caramel and gives you that brown color. So different kinds of thickeners um, for different kinds of sauces um, from corn flour to arrowroot to your roots. Um, other things that you have for soup derivatives you have meat and veg such as pea and ham or your cold soup, as we mentioned before, coming from um, Spain, so your gazpacho. Um, we also will talk about um, other soups, such as your sago soup from Asia, that is served as a dessert. Um, your beverage soup, such as beer and cheddar soup um, from the Europe. Um, you will also be making chowder. And chowder is a seafood-based soup in your recipe book. This um, is thickened also with a roux. Um, then you have um, to make sure that your base liquid matches the soup that you make, which means if you're making a minestrone, which is a vegetable soup, then you would probably use vegetable stock, partly because you might have a vegan customer you might have a um, vegetarian customer, so you don't want to mix and match chicken stock into your minestrone if you're not adding 
if you're not adding any main elements to the soup anyway. So this keeps it safe for all these people that have dietary requirements. 